everyone. Welcome back. Please comment, subscribe, follow, comment, subscribe, like the videos. Also share the videos. I want to thank everyone else that does like, watch, and share my videos. You folks are the absolute best. Listen, folks. There's a link tree down below. Has the links to all of my social media platforms. Please go down there. Follow me across all my social media platforms and talk to me because I'll talk back. Also down there as well as links to all of my YouTube pages. Please go down there, subscribe to all my YouTube pages, and turn on your notifications so when I post content, you folks will be in the know. Listen, folks, today, Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, we'll be doing a live radio show right here on this channel. We'll be talking about the Jets, the draft, everything that's been going on. Call in. I take live callers. I love going back and forth with you folks about this football team. Now, with that said and done and put to the side, I've come to talk to you folks today about Makai Becton. Whoa, all right? The New York Jets have declined Makai Becton's fifth-year option. Mm. Interesting. It's interesting, okay? Now, listen, we're going to get into it. The Jets have officially declined Makai Becton's fifth-year option. Uh, the decision was due today at 4 p.m., okay? And they made it. They say, hey, we're not giving it a fifth-year option. Said and done. That's done. There's other players as well that haven't got the fifth-year option as well. Chase Young was one of them. <laughs> there's, there's a couple guys that definitely didn't get I think it's like up to 14 players now uh, the last time uh, that we saw reports, right, that are not getting their fifth-year options. Now, I'm a little shocked, but I'm not blown away, right? When you look at the situation with Makai Becton, had he have gotten the fifth-year option, it would have been $13.5 million guaranteed. It would have kept him here through 2024 season, and everything would be good. Now, this situation puts Makai Becton into a prove-it year, okay? And when you look at what's been going on here with him, he's looked amazing this offseason, all right? You can see him. He's in the gym. He's posting pictures. He clearly is slim and trim and working. Not only is he getting better physically, but he's also getting better mentally. He's talked about that as well. You can see him going back and forth with the fan base, getting involved with, you know, talking to people and inspiring people to get into the gym as well. He's inspired a lot of Jets fans to hit the gym and get their bodies together as well. A lot of people have talked about that. And he's going back and forth with people and he's chit-chatting and, I mean, really you know, becoming a, a fan favorite. Really, he is, you know, and that, that's a that's a change. <laughs> that's definitely a change with Makai because he didn't used to be as close with the fan base as he is now, right? So when you look at the situation, right, he's battled back from the knee injuries, as we know. Um, he had knee injuries. Greg Van Roten was thrown into the back of him uh, two seasons ago, and he's battled, basically battled that knee injury for a while, right? Tried to come back this past season, fractured the kneecap in the off season. And, you know, never could get rolling again, right? He was supposed to come back, according to reports, but that never happened. And then leaks started to come out about him being overweight, that the coaching staff was frustrated with him not coming back. And there was talks of a lack of work ethic, you know, all kinds of stuff, right? But there was also things that came out from his trainer as well that, listen, he was never coming back from that knee injury. And he also hinted at the fact that the knee injury was worse than what was actually being reported, Okay. So, when you look at the situation now, right, when you look at how things are shaping up, Makai Becton, to be completely honest, when he's fully healthy, is the best tackle on this team by far. By far. When Makai Becton is healthy, and we saw that his rookie year, fully healthy, Makai Becton is dominant. I'm talking about throwing people around. I'm talking about making top pass rushers in this league like Bosa, Chubb, a host of other guys as well, making them look like average guys, right? He was regarded in his rookie year as one of the best tackles in all of football. And it wasn't just by like me, because I'm, you know, I'm a homer, everybody, you know, I keep it real, but people go, like, oh, Joe, you're a homer. No, it wasn't just me. It was analysts across, you know, the NFL. It was also guys that have played in this game, guys like Damian Woody, who's one of, you know, a great tackle in this league for a long time, a great offensive lineman in this league for a long time, was saying, yo, this guy is, he's one of those guys. He's one of those ones. So... When you look at that, right, if he's fully healthy, if he can return to that dominant fashion this upcoming season, it's looked like, again, he's prepared his body and prepared his mind, the Jets are going to be in quite a situation. They're going to be in a situation because they declined this fifth-year option. If he balls out, they're going to have to pay him, okay? Now, they could franchise him. That is an option that they could do. But listen here. 
the franchise tag, at least for this year, offensive lineman for this year, if you franchise uh, tag an offensive lineman this year, it was $18.24 million. I guarantee you it's going to go up next season. Well, the fifth-year option would have just been 13.5. You're going to pay more to franchise him than you would have if you gave him the fifth-year option. Also, right, if you try to pay him, right, if you try to pay him, okay, that could get crazy because if he returns to the type of lineman that he was when he was fully healthy, if he plays on that all-pro, Pro Bowl level, right, man, you're going to have to pay him an astronomical number because tackles in this league get paid out the wazoo. Laramie Tunzel, okay, just, just signed a deal. Three years, $75 million. That's $25 million per. I guarantee you that's going to go up next year. Somebody's going to get a big, big contract next year as well. And it could be Beckton if he plays on that level. So you're kind of playing a game of chicken with the money, right? Because uh, if he plays to a top level, can you pay him that much? And if you can't, let me tell you something. There are many other teams out there that will be vying for his services, guaranteed, guaranteed if he plays on that top level that we all know that he could play on. So that's a little scary, right? Then you look at the New York Jets. Let's say Makai Becton ends up moving on because we can't keep him. Well, you don't have an answer at left tackle beyond Dwayne Brown. Dwayne Brown, though, is 37 years old. He's not going to be here forever, and we saw him battle a shoulder injury last season. Now, according to coaching staff, especially Robert Sella, they love that guy. They call him a freaking rock star, say he's amazing. We all know he played through the shoulder injury, and we kind of saw it in his play because it wasn't the best as well. Now you got to wonder, hey, can he come into this season and be fully healthy? And if Makai ends up walking away, is he going to stay around? If he doesn't and retires, we're in a world of trouble because then there's no answer. There's literally no answer at left tackle at all. And Makai Beckton more than likely would have played right tackle this season. But if he moves on, then there's no answer for left tackle because I would think that if Dwayne Brown was retiring, he would go back to his natural position of left tackle. Now you're wondering about what's going on. You're playing musical chairs there at tackle, right? You got to see. You got to see. And again, you look at this tackle situation with the Jets. We just signed Billy Turner, but he's on a one-year deal. Maybe he could be the guy that the Jets move on from, move on with if Makai Becton decides to go on about his business and we can't get him signed. Uh, maybe Max Mitchell's a guy that fills in there at that tackle spot. But again, Max Mitchell's coming off of a knee injury as well and blood clots. He ended the season on IR this past season. There's a lot of questions. And I know we just got that tackle uh, from Pitt as well in the draft. Maybe he's a guy that can step in after a year, you know, uh, of being on the team. Who knows? But this is... This is going to be very interesting to go, go forward in this situation. And again, I'm not shocked about this situation with Makai Becton because there's been a lot of things moving and shaking surrounding him. But it's like, man, it's going to be kind of crazy going forward to see how the Jets handle this. So comment down below. Let me know what you folks think. What are your thoughts about the New York Jets declining Makai Becton's fifth-year option? Do you like the move? Do you not like the move? You know, if so, what are your thoughts about what could happen if he moves on from the New York Jets after playing great this upcoming season, if that happens, you know? What are your thoughts about that? Who do you think will be somebody in line to step up? Uh, do you think the Jets go after a tackle, you know, in the upcoming draft? Again, we're probably not going to have a first rounder in this upcoming draft. So, it's a lot to talk about. Comment down below. You folks have a good one. Peace.